Welcome to Rick's Corner. The man, the myth, the legend. Now on with the show. Welcome to Rick's Corner. You know who I am, and you know who Denise is, who's been on my show many, many times. And I've been trying to get on her for three months, and it's been difficult. It's easier for me to get an appointment with my cardiologist, which takes like three months. He still hasn't called me back, at least you're here. That no, it's hard to get you. It is. I, it is. It's chaos around me all the time. I, I know. So many different things going on. And I mean, you know what that's like. And yeah. I, when I sit down and talk to you about all the different things that you do and all the different things that you've done, yeah. I feel like I'm talking to myself sometimes. I know. We parallel a lot down that road. We had breakfast the other morning. We were talking about getting started in business and where we began and how it all materialized. So um, I'll let you go with that and then I'll chime Yeah, in. I mean, listening to your stories at breakfast um, and listening to you talk about how in wrestling there wasn't a lot of money. Here mm -hmm. you are, this incredible professional wrestler. You're this great bodybuilder. And back in the day, and even, well, especially in the bodybuilding world, there's no money even on the professional side of it. And you work hard and you're dedicated, um, but you have to find a way to support yourself. You yeah. have to find a way to turn that passion uh, into a way to be able to put food on the table, feed your family, house yourself. Um, and it's hard, but you've done that. Mm -hmm. You've done that your whole life, and mm -hmm. you were telling me about what it was like to uh, be a professional wrestler. And I mean, you used to wrestle it a couple times a week. What were you doing? Well, my father died when I was 18. He owned a, um, a store in Bakersfield for children's clothes and furniture. My mom helped him alongside him, and then he died. And then I went into the Army, and I got out of the Army, and went back to college. I don't know why. Excuse my cough. <coughs> I have a cough drop in, but that's another thing. Anyway, I didn't like college. And I didn't find a subject on other than art. <coughs> Got it. Sorry. So my mom said to me, what are you going to do with your life? She says, um, you're working at a bank, which I did not like. Then I went to work for a gym because I knew it. But it wasn't what I really wanted, and so in 1965, I decided to go into professional wrestling, and my mom said, why would you do that? I said, I don't know, it's the entertainment business. My dad used to take me to shows, and I'm bodybuilding, and I want some titles, and let me put this body to use and make some money with it. So I drove down to L.A., and people know this story, and trained with Johnny Mae Young for six months until she put me on Channel 5. It didn't pay a lot of money, $35 here and there, but then they started booking me five, six nights a week, so I had an income. In the meantime... $35 a night? Like every time you wrestled, you got 35 bucks? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sometimes 50. Okay. Never less than 25. Um, then I was working at the gym too. Then I was also playing guitar in a rock band Friday and Saturday night, so that made me about another 30 or 40. Okay. <coughs> Hope this cough drop works. Anyway, um, I had several incomes and I started putting money away. And then I moved to Los Angeles in 69. She says, you know, Bakersfield's not a place for you. There's very limited on what you can do in this town other than raise cattle or farming, which I knew. So I moved to LA and I went to work for Kellogg Cereal as a salesman. And I didn't like it, but it opened doors to meet other people. I trained at Bill Pearls and met people. And then I went to Gold's and met people. And then I quit that business and I went to Gold's and trained with Arnold. And probably within a few weeks, I nabbed a Chevy commercial on the beach with him, made $1,000, got an agent, joined Screen Actors Guild, started getting auditions and going out on commercials at work, and he was too. Several of us were, and we started getting work like Johnny Carson show, Flip Wilson, Cher, all the variety shows, and it built up a reservoir of income so that I could collect unemployment. So I was able to wrestle at night, collect my unemployment. Um, I was also training a couple of people, but not really, but I started the mail order business with Joe Weider based on the Gold's Gym logo that I did, and I ran a full page ad of all my designs that I had created, and I hired a silk screener, which took forever to get the silk screen done, so I built my own equipment in my garage and started printing my own stuff and knocking out about 100 shirts an hour and filled my orders and was doing $80,000 a year out of my garage 
in like 72. 1972. How, wait a minute, wait a minute. How much uh, money out of your garage? 80000 a year. That's a lot of money. And that's a lot of money back then. Yeah, it's a lot and of money. Especially back then. It's a lot of money now. Yeah, and I was still wrestling at night. Uh, and I just started putting money away and putting money away. And I invested in mutual funds, which today I still have. And they really have grown. And I bought this house. This house I bought in 79 in the corner of Sherman Oaks. It's a nice house. Yeah. I bought it for 86000 It's worth 900000 now. Mm. I'm not going to sell it because I have nowhere to go at my age. Yeah, but to this day, yeah. you're still, you're you're drawing and you're selling your autographed art pieces, mm -hmm. one, which one which I have and love, um, and you know you're you're doing your show and you're doing work for uh, commission work, artwork, mm -hmm. and you're you're still doing all kinds of different things. Um, to yeah, be because an idle mind doesn't work. You know, a train sitting on a track doesn't do anything unless it moves forward. And so I also believe that you have to find your place and take it and go in different directions. So the artwork from the Golds logo, from the World Gym logo to my own designs, then I created my website, then I have this Golds logo I sell for $80 sign and people buy it, I sell a lot of those. And then I have t-shirt royalties on the Golds Gym logo worldwide and other designs along with, with Rich Gaspari. And um, that's doing pretty well. I think it's gonna do even better this year. So. You just have to go in different directions and try things. Not, I don't say that I try them because to me try means fail or try means fail. Like my son used to say, I'll try and come over. Well, I knew he wasn't going to when he said try. Well, but, but that's different. No, you don't try them, you do them. And you expect good results. I never know the word no. I used to go on casting calls. They say, oh, it's a business of re rejection and, and acting. I said, I don't care. I'll find something the next day even better. And sure enough, I go on an audition, didn't get that one, but I got the next one. It was a better one. So I never walk away saying, oh my God, I didn't get it. What am I going to do? And felt bad because there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Something new always comes up. Always, without fail. So, so you're eternally optimistic. Yes. Yeah, you are, aren't you? I am. I, you know, when, um, when I realized after I got my pro card, which was mm -hmm. just a couple of years after I started competing, mm -hmm. that there was no pot of gold at the end of that rainbow. Mm -hmm. And that was... A lot of work just just to compete and be competitive and then to get my pro card and to realize that even if I competed at the highest levels of my sport as a woman bodybuilder mm -hmm. that I wouldn't be able to make enough money to right. to survive when I realized that um, I got to work with my partners Robert and Barbara uh, at promoting women's bodybuilding because mm -hmm. the other thing that happened when I turned pro and that was in 95 mm -hmm. was that I was told by uh, one of the editors of Flex Magazine at the time that they were contracting the amount of promotional work they were doing featuring women bodybuilders at that time and this was 95 mm -hmm. and I felt like I was this starry-eyed kid because I was like 22 years old right. who had walked into a room where I had earned I worked so hard I had earned this qualification IFBB Pro mm -hmm. and I walked in with a big balloon and somebody from like the epitome of the sport like the high pinnacle of the sport mm -hmm. said okay here's a pin let me just go ahead and pop that for you um, but it was the best thing that ever happened to me because I knew that as being a women bodybuilder wasn't for everybody and that a lot of people couldn't really tell how they felt about it. Mm -hmm. They felt strongly about it, but I knew that that was a pretty powerful thing. And so it put us to work to start promoting women's bodybuilding. And we did the same thing you did. In my garage, I had stacks of 8x10s. I had the, the magazine when we started publishing Is that it. the magazine? This is, uh, these are copies Hold of some of the issues of the magazine, Muscle Elegance magazine, that we published. Um, and when we did this, when we did this magazine, we had so many people tell us, you can't do that. You don't know publishing. Um, you won't succeed. There is no market for what you're doing. We had people in the bodybuilding world. We mm -hmm. had people in the publishing world. Mm -hmm. We had distribution people telling us there was no way we would succeed, that there wasn't a place for what we were doing. Um, and we listened to none of it. You can't listen. We listened to none of it. And so I... I'm not sure where that optimism comes from. Maybe it's just just loving what you do so much well, that magazines, it helps you push through. Magazines back in the day cost a lot of money, 
monthly to publish and get them out there. Yes. Then you need distribution. Yes. That's the whole key to get that magazine on the shelves where people are going to buy it, have them see it and pick it up and get sales and have enough to come to, to do the next month along with it. And even with my ads with Joe Weider, it would take three months for people to actually see it and I get money returned That's on it. That's right. They would see it the first time, second time, oh, maybe, and the third time they buy. It's pagination mm -hmm. because everything's paginated three months ahead of time, and I had to learn that mm -hmm. when we did it. I mean, our magazine was never more than a quarterly magazine because we were self-funding mm -hmm. every single issue, and it cost us about $30,000 of our like every every dollar we had. Oh, it's just a very every expensive. Every single issue. But you know what was interesting? Um, the only reason we made it, and because this is before the internet, the only reason Muscle Elegance Magazine is still alive today, and we're in the 22nd year in business, 22 years, is because we were able to reach the fans of women's bodybuilding. We were able to expose more people to women's bodybuilding in a way that it had never been done before. Mm -hmm. We had professional makeup and lighting and all the things that are required to mm -hmm. present something really well and in a, in a commercial way. Because that was never done before. It was never done before, but it was the fans that subscribed to our magazine. And what they did was, uh, it was crowdfunding. I mean, we were crowdfunded before crowdfunding was a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and when no, I think they back, they call it something else did, now. They call it Kickstarter. Yeah, so that Kickstarter is one example of crowdfunding. Yeah. And there's uh, there are several others, but you know, I didn't realize this until I started really thinking about what we did and how we accomplished it. That if it wasn't for the fans, and it's always about the fans, it is. Um, if people love what you do, uh, they'll support you, and if you're true to what you say you're going to provide, they will support you even more. And I have people that have been supporting us for, again, 22 years. I'm so grateful for you that. You have to be true to your word. You have to be loyal. You have to listen to them, interact with them. Exactly. And know what they want and take each one personal because they're taking the time on my show to write to me. Right. I take the time to get back to them, no right. matter who they are. Oh, I'm so glad you got back to me. I didn't think you'd have time. I'm honored. Oh my God, I'm falling over. Right. Well, I'm a human like you are. Yeah. And I hear what you say, and I'm going to get back to you. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, I had somebody mention this the other day. You know, you, you must be taking notes from some place. You know, some other performer. And I said, No, I'm not. I've been taking notes my whole career. Yeah. I've been listening to my audience, my fans. I've been listening, and I encourage always have what are your thoughts what do you like what you know what do you see um and like you said taking them seriously mm -hmm. and then inter interjecting those thoughts those ideas um into everything that we do just makes it far more interesting uh, and do, a lot do, you, do you make notes on everything that goes to your head i put them down on my phone yeah. So that I don't forget, because yeah. they'll get in my head and out in the middle of the night. I get an idea <laughs> while I'm sleeping. I say, oh, I gotta remember that for morning. If I don't put it down, it's gone. <laughs> it's gonna disappear. Yeah, but I like I like paper. I'm a paper. I'm totally old school. I know he says he's old school. So am I. Um, no, I, write I love down. I love pencils because I like to erase. And I love paper, so I'm a note taker and I'm a list maker. Yeah, I used to do a daily journal and I had everything to accomplish that day and the next day and check them off right. and go. Me too. It just got to be a lot of work, so I just do it on my phone and I just delete whatever I got done. But it's not easy, you know, people think it's so easy what we do because it looks easy. Right, you make, you make it look easy. Yeah, I do. I think you do because you know what it is, people see the success and people see, they see the great ideas and you're very creative and they think it's easy for him and it's on some levels there's a point behind that because you are very creative and you're a great artist and all that and that's a talent that you own and you've developed yeah um, and so it is but it is a developmental process and with publishing I had to learn publishing I mean if I knew uh, then what I know now about publishing I never would have jumped into the deep end of the pool and so ignorance is bliss and 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 I'm going to say that because it's important. Um, it, it's very easy to get discouraged, even if you have a great idea or a piece of a great idea and never do anything with it. But if you don't allow that to happen and you allow yourself to jump into the deep end of the pool with something and learn it and work it and tweak it as you go, you will be successful. And that's what we did. That's what you did. I did it because I didn't know any better. I figured that right. there's no way to fail. <laughs> 
I just took each thing that I did and said, okay, this is going to work. I'm going to try this and do it. Not try it. I'm going to do it. This is going to work. This is iffy, but this will work. And so I would do them. And when I started doing the show, I did it outside by the side of my ring with kids that were wrestling. I had no background. I just had a microphone. And then we moved into my garage where I had all my silk screening stuff and I hung up a backdrop. I uh, said EWF Wrestling. I did interviews with the kids teaching them how to talk in the microphone. That was kind of fun to put it on YouTube. Then I went down to Joanne's Fabrics and bought a green screen, or green fabric, which I should have bought the real screen, which I did later, and learned how to do green screening. And I put the ocean behind me in my interviews. I put everything behind me. Robert Patrick, and I had people from uh, uh, different shows on it, like Luke Perry, and oh, you name it. The, uh, what's his name from Blind Date? Um, a friend of mine lost his name all of a sudden. But that was fun. And so then I built a set out there. Then I got asked to do Marina Menounos After Buzz TV and do the Friday Night Smackdown. Then I did Actors Entertainment in, in, uh, in uh, Hollywood. Then I had Victor Jason Live and Tough and Tenor. So I had all these shows running, learning how to interview people just on my own and picking up little tricks from watching others. Mm -hmm. And it worked. And so eventually I thought I need a better studio where we are today. This yeah. was a vacant room in my house. It was a bedroom and then a den. My, sister, my daughter moved down the hall. And so I turned it in, as you see, with yeah, the lights great. and the backdrop a into room. a great studio where I can shoot everything in here and then go right around the corner to my office and do all my editing. Yeah. So everything's at my fingertips. Somebody wants a reel on me, I can shoot it right now. But I knew I could make it happen. And being creative, I did make it happen. And getting the right camera, getting the right lights, not a huge investment, but it's money you have to lay out. And it works. Yeah, but you taught yourself how to edit. I did. You taught yourself how to set up lighting. You taught yourself how to, and my company did the same thing. We were not trained in anything that mm -hmm. we did. Photo shoots, touch up, publishing, printing, all of it. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, I want to impress this upon people. Today, we live in a YouTube world where you can find information and yes. how to's on anything. So it's so much easier in that regard. Usually from a 12 year old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, but, um, we learn the hard way and and that's not a bad thing because in the process you make mistakes and from that you learn and you get better as long as you don't give up um we had to learn everything and i have great memories about the crazy things that we tried some of them didn't work well some of them failed the you will fail in certain things because that's just part of learning. It is it's part like, of learning. You know, when you learn how to walk, you fell a lot. Trust me. Ask your mom. Well, um, I'll go ahead. I'm sorry. So, so, so I do say I'm going to try this. You know, yeah. and um, years ago, I would worry about failing. I did, and I think that's a big problem for a lot of people and why they don't try things. They're afraid of being embarrassed, failing, whatever. Right, it's a big problem. I used to worry about failing, not that much, because I threw myself out there. Uh, I believed in my hard work. I believed that I could figure it out, uh, and that work would trump um, my, my whatever I was naive in. Uh, now I don't worry about failing as much. It creeps in sometimes. Um, but I reset myself so that I recognize that failing is part of learning and it's part of the process and if you let it, it will stop you. Yes. Cold. Well, I know I told you a lot of stories at breakfast, a lot of history about bodybuilding and people back in the day, which was it's pretty unique, some pretty strange things, but there was no internet when I started my ad in Joe Weider's Muscle and Fitness. It was all magazine oriented and then there was muscular development, Iron Man, uh, Muscle Builder, I went to Runner's World, Soccer World different magazines and I would design t-shirts to fit those ads for 150 bucks, call them ad with designs and I'd lay the ad out for 150 bucks and I ended up making money back, printing those shirts as I went along. Then I threw watches in, baseball caps, keychains, anything I could find that I could make to, to sell and it worked. Um, I did something with soap operas because soap operas were a big thing and no one that, had... Right, that was the other story you were telling me. Well, no one had soap opera t-shirts and I said, why That's just magazine. Why wouldn't they sell t-shirts? They make a fortune. So I did all these t-shirts like the Guiding Light, Days of Our Lives, Young and the Restless and I had them all columned out and I ran that ad for a month, the second month and I made about $5,000 when two attorneys came out to ask me if I could please get rid of the screens. I had a bathing suit and I'd been tanning for a show. They were very nice to me. I destroyed the screen. They walked away happy, and that was it. But I made my money. Okay, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You started making T-shirts for the soap fans, yeah. soap operas, very big. My mother used to watch them, because uh, you saw you saw a need. 
Yeah. You saw that nobody was doing it. <coughs> yeah. <clears throat> I also did license plate frames and I'd rather be watching the soaps. I see, still see some of those around today. Okay, but then somebody came to your house. The attorneys. You? I, I was a trademark infringement. Oh. <laughs> and I kind of knew it, but I didn't care. Oh, you knew it. I didn't care. <laughs> I made my money and left. So, so that's the old, what's the old saying? It's better to ask for forgiveness than it is to ask for permission? I didn't want to ask for permission, I just took a chance. Right. And it worked. You took a chance and it worked. So, <coughs> that's how things get started and then you just go on blossom out from there and try new stuff and see where it's going to go. Yeah. And you've done the same thing. I, I have and um, when I look back, you know, when you're in it, at the time that I was publishing the hard copy of the magazine, um, I was also competing on the pro level women's bodybuilding and aspiring to uh, be on the Olympia stage. And so I was always working. Mm -hmm. I was training. I was, I mean, discipline. You still are. Is, yes, I, yeah, I am. Um, but uh, so I don't think I ever really stopped to think about how much was being done. I mean, I, I knew I was doing a lot, um, but I was very focused. Um, a on what the fans were saying, the fact that they were out there, yeah. that we were doing something really good. I think for the women of the sport too, we got to feature, I got to work with incredible female athletes from around the world, um, pro and aspiring. Um, so I was so uh, inspired by the creative side of it yeah. and what we were doing that it didn't matter that I was tired. And now that we're not doing quite as much in that regard, we're not publishing the magazine, we're online. Um, now I look back, and then when I sit down and have conversations with you about the crazy things you did in your garage, and I start thinking about my garage and my partners, Robert and Barbara, and I think about what we accomplished, now I, I recognize yeah. how special that was. Um, and I, I don't think there would have been any other combination of people working with me, Robert and Barbara, who would have worked as hard, who would have been as passionate. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we could, I don't think anybody else could have done what we did. I think we were we had a certain amount of audacity. You, you don't know? see that today, but now you inspire others. That's my hope. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows who you are, and you you get yourself out there, and you do a lot of events, and people know you're successful. Yeah. That inspires them. And the same for you. Well, you don't know. I don't really realize how much I've done until I listed it. I've done uh, maybe three or four, maybe five documentaries, and they want me to list everything. And when I start listing, I look and I said, "That's me. I did that." And it's supposed to. Don't you remember this one too? And that one too? No, I don't. I forget. It's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Yeah, but I'm not done yet. No. As soon as I get over this thing, my leg, there's more to come. Yeah. I'm gonna change my well, name to Mordecai. More to come from Mordecai. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, it's fun to watch, and thank you for inspiring me because listening to you. Mm -hmm. Um, I just it made me think about what we did, how mm -hmm. special it was. Um, it made me think about the people that allowed us to make it happen, which are the fans. Of course. Um, and it, it excites me about what's next. You know, everything goes around full circle. It, this will, but it might. Uh, I know my old designs are coming back around again. I might do from the 70s. Uh, I might take a chance on that, see how it goes. But you never know. I mean, this show's doing so well and it's growing and growing and growing. Thanks to all you fans out there. But I'm gonna continue with it. That's my gardener. Yeah. He would come now. Right. <laughs> Maybe we can get him in here. There you go. Um, so this is where it's at. And what's this you have over here, Adventures of Misfit? Well, so of course we went from the magazine to DVDs and yeah. then the documentary, um, Adventures of Misfit. And the, you know, the creativity and the storytelling um, uh, continues. Yeah, and tell us what it is. Well, this is The Adventures of Misfit, the documentary about real-life superheroes that mm -hmm. we released last year, mm -hmm. where um, I went around uh, right. with my I, husband, I the saw director, it. Greg yeah. Simpson, and we interviewed people who dress up like real-life superheroes. That's another example of creative, jump into the deep end of the pool and go out and get things done. That was fun stuff. Yeah. I mean, we did a good job on that, and there are people all around doing this kind of stuff. Yeah. Which was, you found them. Yeah. You tell that guy to be quiet out there? I know. I know. Thank God he's getting my leads. Right. And then maybe he'll leave after he gets the leads. No, this is, this is fun. Where can they get this if they want it? So, adventuresofmisfit.com. And it's M-I-S-S-F-I-T because, of course, I'm Misfit. Yes, you certainly are. For life. I'm going to put that up for you. Is there anything else you'd like to add today before we... 
close this out? No, I hope that um, I hope that we've shared some things that you might not have thought about. That uh, that if you have something going in your mind and you haven't jumped in to mm-hmm. try it and go for it, that maybe this will give you the push that you need. Because yeah. we believe in you. Yeah, don't sit back on yourself. You know, take that chance. Don't get locked into the eight to five job the rest of your life and say, "Oh, I only wished I had a." My mom did that when she married my dad. She worked for him full time in the store. She wanted to be a fashion designer. She went to Fashion Institute and she never pursued it. He wanted to be a lawyer and he never finished the last year because he opened up his business. So neither one of them got to pursue what they wanted to do. But I did. And I took that chance and I said, I'm going to do it regardless of anything else. I'm going to make this happen. And I made it happen. She says, I don't know about you. She says, you always find a way of making money. I said, so you could trip over a rock out there and fall into a thousand dollars. And sincerely, that's how my life has been. I turn around, I have the best luck in the world, but I think you manifest it and you think yeah. about it and it comes your way. But I do have yes. on a daily basis good luck. Yeah. Um, and I'm blessed to have that because it could be the other way around. I'm on a cane right now for my leg, which is temporary, and then I saw a guy on a walker with a foot completely bent in, all bent over, and I thought, oh my God, I could have been him. That poor guy I felt so bad for. So there's always somebody worse off than you are. And um, you just got to thank God it's not you. I think it's I think it's your gratitude that makes you so positive. Maybe. My mom always used to say to me, when you start feeling sorry for yourself, look around. Yeah. Look around and then and then realize how good you have it. And so that's what I do my whole life. So I Yeah. We're kinda like we're a lot alike. Yeah, I mean I don't feel sorry for myself at all. Yes, I'm getting older. Do I like it? No. But it is a fact, it is a number and it's up there. I was talking to somebody today, he says, his friend called him, he says, six of my friends died last month, they're older than my age. It's true, they do. But that's life. (laughs) Or not life, but that's what happens. And so, you just do the best you can to try to move forward. Hopefully you don't catch anything that can knock you out. Right, well, but, and you enjoy every day. I mean, you're always doing cool stuff. Yeah, I don't let the gym ever get, I never miss the gym. Yeah. No matter how bad I am, I go to the gym. Yeah. So uh, that's my medicine, I believe, and then my nutrition, of course. That's the other point. Nutrition? The gym. The gym, it's key. Because it's, I mean, it's therapeutic. Yeah. It's a great, when, sometimes I go into the gym and I get a great workout in and I have all these ideas. Does that ever happen to you? Yes. I get all these ideas firing in my head. All the time. And I'm like ready. As long as people leave me alone. No, I'm kidding. People don't leave you alone because you're like a magnet. I know that. Um, the gym is a medicine to me and I always feel better once I leave. A friend of mine says, aren't you going to go heavier, go heavier? No, I don't want to go heavier. I don't care about being big and muscular anymore. Yeah. I'm in good shape now. I look fine at 220. I'm staying right there. I just want to be in good shape. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to feel good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I just want to thank all of you for watching Rick's Corner. Thank you, Denise, for being here. And uh, stay tuned for more. Thank you for having me. Hey, everyone. Now you can have the Gold's Gym logo drawn by me, the artist Rick Drayson personalized and made out to you and signed by me to frame and put on your gym wall or wherever you see fit to do so. It's a piece of bodybuilding history. It will never be duplicated again. It's the largest selling icon t-shirt logo in the world. And I'm the guy that drew it. And I will draw it for you. Just go to my website, rickdrazen.com and order there. You can pay through PayPal and it'll be sent out right away. And be sure to watch Rick's Corner for all the videos on bodybuilding, nutrition, fitness, pro wrestling, and anything that suits your interests as far as getting physically fit and being the best you can be from the golden era of bodybuilding. Baby, see you next time.